Hi, welcome to Chamber Chats. I'm Bruce Williams. I'm the CEO of the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to begin, as always, by recognizing that I live and work in the ancestral territories of the lekwungen speaking Coast Salish nations, the Songhees and the Esquimalt. It's our privilege and honor to be living and working alongside them every day. Chamber Chats are made possible by the support of Island Savings, a division of First West Credit Union, and we're going to be talking with one of their experts in just a minute. All about your money. Are you getting along with your money? Are you understanding your money? Has this all been kind of a blur? I mean, we've seen people that have had tremendous success with their money throughout the pandemic, but others, of course, have had horrible challenges. So a couple of professionals with us today to talk about that. Jen Bogwald, first of all, is a partner and business advisor for private enterprise with MNP. And Robin Marshall is the director of wealth management for Island Savings, a division of First West Credit Union. Thank you to both of you for being here today. One of the outstanding things that's been literally very upfront throughout the entire pandemic um, has been the performance of investment portfolios. People have done pretty well. So Robin, that's kind of right in your wheelhouse to, yeah. to not get into a huge amount of finite detail, but what has been going on in the markets for the last two years? Yeah. the you know I think everyone was expecting a little bit more turmoil in the markets than we saw for sure. And the markets did tremendously last year. So uh, those um, investors that were invested in the market saw very strong uh, results through their portfolios last year, which was, uh, which was fantastic. So how has that impacted people's operations day to day? What, what you've seen, Jen, and what have people had to say about that? Well, they've been really happy with it, honestly. There's been, obviously, depends which sector you're in. There's a lot of businesses that have struggled immensely through this period. But there are uh, folks that are uh, have retirement portfolios or investments in their holding companies have been actually quite doing quite well through this. So let's pick up a little bit. What's done well, Robin? Where have been the sectors that have really excelled and done high return? Uh, generally speaking, uh, across many sectors, we've we've seen a lot of growth. Uh, where we've seen probably some pullback, I know people were looking at uh, big topics of conversation, where should I be investing in gold or looking at uh, cryptocurrencies? And those honestly lost a lot of favor last year and uh, back to a lot of, of core investing, uh, looking at... Um, you know, back to the, the traditional, the blue chips and the things that really have performed well and those continue to rise as well during the course of uh, last year. So in sort of a big picture of what both of you do day to day in your in your business lives, uh, when somebody calls up in a panic or if they've got a problem, Jen, what is it? What's been the one that you've so, heard the most? So uh, not so much a problem, but opportunity. There's been a ton mm-hmm. of opportunity in real estate, on, especially on Vancouver Island. And with a lot of um, people turning to maybe uh, REITs and uh, partnering with developers, like all sorts. So I get a lot of those calls where they're looking at the pros and cons of putting their money into real estate and how should they go about doing that. You should probably clarify what a REIT is. Yeah. REIT is a... A real estate investment trust. So it's an investment vehicle, essentially, that's um, outside of maybe the publicly traded um, securities. Robin, is that fair? That is fair. Uh, Generally, (laughs) a a REIT would hold a lot of uh, um, corporate investments. So those Mm -hmm. uh, big players that uh, run uh, office buildings or uh, shopping malls, uh, those types of um, leaseholders would normally be in type uh, in that basket of investments. So Robin, when you and the other uh, advisors at Island Savings get a call or an email from a client, an investor, how much of it's a little panic? How much of it is opportunity? How much of it is happiness? How much of it is what's going on here? Yeah, a lot of questions. So what do you hear from people? <laughs> I think that's fair. Yeah. Uh, generally, the the questions that we do get are, are um, people are very curious. So, what is what is happening? Should I should I be making some changes? Is now you know should I be liquidating into cash? And uh, this is when it's a really good time to be uh, working with an investment advisor uh, because uh, historically we look at what the markets have done over the last hundred years and. There's been lots of um, significant events that have happened uh, that have affected the economies as a whole. And uh, generally, if you remain invested and committed to your long-term investment strategy over that time, uh, the markets tend to go up. We'll see those blips up and down. And if you've seen any uh, investment charts over those years, you you see the, um, the variations and the fluctuations in the market, but they tend to continue rising. And the danger that a lot of people have when there are 
uh, lots of troubling items in the news or we're, we're going through these, these really impactful periods uh, that are affecting uh, the economy potentially that the the first instinct is, oh, maybe I should, maybe I should get out and should I move into cash? And that's really dangerous because um, the market works um, on, we assume that it's efficient, that it's working on the best information available. So by the time you get the information, the markets have already responded to it. So you've missed that opportunity. Timing the markets is impossible. And so the best way is to stay uh, stay invested, committed to the strategy that you and your advisor have worked on and um, not be too worried about what's happening today, but when do you, you need the money and what do you what is your plan need to deliver for you in the future? This is all long-term stuff, right? This 100%. Is, this is, we're all in this for the long yeah. run. You mentioned that about, uh, and I'll put this question to both of you, uh, working with an advisor. There are people, and we all know them, who say, ah, oh, I can do that myself. I watch the markets. I I listen to the news. I know what's going on. I can manage this stuff by myself. At one point, though, Jen, do you go to someone and say, you know what? I think you might need some help with this. Yeah, with a lot of my clients, it is definitely a point of conversation. And certainly as people age, they're, you know, it becomes even more important. I mean, if they if they enjoy playing and trading and doing it on their own and they're actually really good at it, I still prefer that they have a, an advisor, an investment advisor in their court. But certainly as they start getting um Towards closer to retirement, I am always encouraging my clients to seek out a good investment advisor to help them plan because I've seen so many clients do it so poorly. And I truly believe in the, the advisors and the value that they bring to the table and mitigating the risk. So, yeah, so I mean, a wealth manager is going to be the one that when your buddy calls up and says, Hey, I got a hot tip, I got something you should really, right, mm-hmm. Robin? That's where an advisor can go. Hold it just a second here. Hold right? on That's for the just role a of the advisor. Yeah, and, and a common, common <laughs> yeah. analogy that uh, we talk about all the time is, oh, my buddy at the coffee shop. Um, you know, you, you take that, I think, honestly, with a grain of salt. And uh, what might have worked for your buddy at the coffee shop might not be the, the best solution for you. And, and to Jen's point, uh, we have seen a lot of um, advisors or, or, or sorry, uh, clients over the, the last couple of years that have been managing their own investments that have decided, oh, you know what, this, this wasn't working out as well as I thought. I really do need some help of an expert and uh, working with their accountant p- into that piece is really important as well because you might unwittingly cause yourself some some tax consequences that you weren't planning on. And, uh, you know, if you're good at it, to Jen's point, and, and you want to take a portion of your portfolio and, and try a couple things, by all means, you know, go and do that. But I think, you know, it's really important to be working with advisor for the core of your strategy because um, two reasons. They, just as we talked about earlier, they help you through that emotional piece where it's like, oh, should I do that? Because they're not emotionally attached to your money and you are. Uh, and they can help you to remind you of, of what that long-term strategy is. And if you need to make some tweaks, um, they've, you know, they've got that background and um, their, their eye on the markets that uh, you might not have access to. So it's really important to help you to keep on track. Yeah, we can't say often enough that it's never too early in your life to start doing this kind of financial planning to get ready for your future. Because, you know, even if you're watching this right now and you're a young person and you haven't really got a whole lot of money, you should still probably be taking a look at this to plan for your future. Robin, how do you find a wealth advisor? or someone to help you manage your money? Uh, it's always a good idea. Do a little bit of research. Uh, a good stop first is uh, most financial institutions do have uh, an advisory arm with, within their walls and they're happy to help you out. Uh, if not, always you know, give us a call. We're happy to, to point you in the direction of some really good advisors <laughs> as well. Okay, so we've talked about what's done well. I want to next talk about what hasn't done that well. We're talking today about your money and what you do with it and how you do what you do with your money with a couple of experts in the field. Robin Marshall is the Director of Wealth Management with Island Savings, Division of First West Credit Union. And Jen Bogwald is the uh, Partnership and Business Advisor for Private Enterprise with MNP. So what have both of you, I guess, Jen, maybe we can go first with you. What hasn't done well in this period of relative success for most areas? Well, if we're talking private businesses, it's tourism, right? Tourism right. operators have, and... Uh, any restaurant owners, it's been a very painful time for them. So empathy with them for sure. Um, as far as on the investment side, I haven't drilled it down myself. So I'd be curious to hear what Robin has to say actually. 
Yeah, because I'm just curious to know, too, that when, again, you've seen hospitality, tourism, uh, food services, people, that's just been gutted by Thank what's you. been going on. So trying to wade through the relief programs that were put in place by government, you've probably spent a lot of time, you just closed yeah. your eyes and shook your head there, yeah. trying to get through and wade through all of that stuff to understand it, right? A lot of time went into that, I'll bet. And the ironic part of it all is that those programs really did a poor job of supporting those industries that were the most negatively impacted. Clearly, it wasn't intentional. The government was trying to move quickly uh, to support business. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of tourism operators that struggled immensely. And, yeah, the programs, like we have a team at MNP that quickly was developed to become experts in those programs because we as advisors couldn't keep up with the questions. And so we, we have a team of experts that support our clients through this period, um, help making sure they're getting access to all those funds. So Yeah. Uh, just for context, too, for all of you that are viewing or watching this and listening to it, we're recording this on the 19th of January, which is kind of right in the middle of Omicron. But we think at this point we might have peaked and it might be getting a little bit better. So as we talk about some other money management things here, just keep in mind that this, again, is the 19th of January when we're recording this. So, Robin, aside from hospitality and tourism, are there other areas that didn't perform very well? I would say that those would be the the, the major areas where uh, the markets were, were definitely hit uh, the most. And if we look at kind of investing strategies in general, um, I, I would say that aside from the sector, the sectors we talk talk about, where the things that didn't go well from uh, an investing perspective were those people that um, maybe knee jerk reactioned into liquidating portfolios or um, making changes or deciding to to self-direct their accounts when maybe that wasn't the, the best idea. So uh, those those quick decisions in, in reaction to what, what they were hearing in the news, uh, I would say would probably have been the most impactful things that we saw last year um, because the, the, in general, the, the markets actually responded quite well uh, and, and performed well last year, like we mentioned earlier. Uh, we've seen inflation suddenly climb rapidly in a big hurry. Uh, that comes back to supply and demand. Our supply chain on Vancouver Island has been interrupted and has been insecure for quite some time, especially since the events of the climate and weather back in, in November that happened here. So I want to talk about the green investment thing in a couple of ways. First of all, Jen, there's probably a lot of businesses that are trying to actively green themselves to become better for the planet. To make How much of a pivot has that been and how successful has it been for people? Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that are recognizing the marketing value to looking at more the triple bottom line approach and uh, finding ways to uh, be on profit to measure the success of their business. So there's certainly a huge uprising of businesses that are interested in that. And really, the, it's coming from the desire of their consumers their customers that are asking for that. So I've, I've definitely seen the trend and it's increased significantly in the last couple of years, for sure. Yeah, people, profits, planet for the triple bottom yeah. line, right? Yeah. So Robin, for people that then want to take their resources, their portfolio, their pension money, whatever it might be, and put it into something that will be addressing climate change and help the mitigation of that, what advice do you have for them? Where do they where do they need to look for that? Yeah, for sure. And and I think that, that specifically that climate change issue uh, translates into a, a bigger environmental uh, overview. And I think it's important for um, you to do a little research in that space because that, that green moniker has definitely become very popular, particularly in the investment world. We're hearing a lot, you may have heard it, a term called greenwashing, where um, whether that's companies or in investments are trying to put that favorable light, but they haven't really changed anything to their underlying uh, business. So I know there will be some changes coming from um, our regulators around, uh, particularly on the investment industry, on what qualifies as uh, as green or socially responsible, uh, social responsible investing. And uh, there's been a shift away from that real true kind of green um, phrase to looking at uh, investments that have a, a three-pronged environmental, social, and governance aspect. So when we look at um, uh, companies that what we now call an, an, an ESG rating is all of those things. Are they responsible to the environment? Do they have a, uh, a governance structure that, uh, that makes sense and, and, and supports um, fair trade practices, all those types of things that uh, um, go into that. So definitely worthwhile if you're looking at that aspect uh, and having that 
um, environmental lens on it to do a little bit of research and um, connect with some advisors that uh, have a lot of familiarity with those types of investment products. Yeah, and sustainability is another uh -huh. word that we hear a lot of. I will emphasize again that you are never too young to start investing and putting money away for your future. Just going to put that out there because I want to now ask about how many instances have you both seen where people throughout the pandemic have decided, I'm pulling the pin, I'm out, I'm going to retire. I had it planned on doing it three or four years down the road, I'm going to do it now. So Robin, what does that implication apply to someone with their investments in their portfolio? Yeah, interestingly enough, too, it's uh, you talked about uh, never too young to have planning and never too old uh, as well. Some people think that, oh, it's too late. Mm. Uh, never too late uh, as well to, to look down and, and sit at, at, re, at re, revisiting your plan. And we saw a lot of that this past year, not only for people that were maybe approaching retirement, but people who uh, had the time to reflect on what's important in their lives. And is this really what I want to be doing? Uh, do I maybe want to change jobs? Or do we have the flexibility now within our family to adjust the way that we work? Um, people found that, hey, now that I've been working at home, this has been great for our family. I've been able to have a different type of work-life balance. And as uh, companies are kind of reevaluating, moving back into, uh, do we need to have people working more at home? Um, employees are saying, maybe I don't want to anymore. And can we afford to restructure our, uh, our own situation where I, I can make work part time. And that's where it's been really key where we've seen a lot of people coming in and just reevaluating their plans, reevaluating what's important and looking at, yeah, maybe, it, maybe I can retire and maybe it is the time now that I can step away or um, reduce the number of hours that I'm working. So, you know, working with your advisor, again, really critical through what we've seen over the last uh, year for sure. Yeah, so in what you do, Jen, at MNP, what are those conversations like? What are you hearing? Yeah, exactly, Bruce. And to echo Robin's points, like there's been a lot of reflection that people are doing um, about there, about what their goals are. What what do they want from their business? What do they need from their business? So, yeah, I, I work a lot with people uh, as we plan for uh, retirement, their optimal exit uh, from their business. And I have seen an uptick in the number of people interested in moving that conversation forward and truly coming up with a plan. Is it because they can't travel right now? Maybe, right? So now they're they're here, they're thinking about it, the reality hits. Um, and yeah, we've seen a lot of that as well as sort of revisiting their planning from a estate perspective and getting all their affairs in order. Um, I think everybody knows somebody who's who's been sick with COVID and the the reality of our mortality comes into play more often than maybe it did three years ago so I think that helps people to sort of come to grips with the reality of you know we're we're all going to exit this world at some point let's uh make sure we get from it what we need and and let's plan for that right so yeah, lots right. of planning yeah, conversations. Yeah, agreed, Jen. And I know that for uh, some of our advisors as well who who have passed on stories were um, just dealing with those uh, specific things. And insurance is obviously a, a very important part of, of financial planning. And uh, where members previously were like, I'm, gonna, I, I'm just going to put that back burner for right now, all of a sudden are like, oh, no, that's that actually needs to be front burner. I've seen, you know, people that I know that have been impacted uh, and it's 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 caused them to reflect as well. You know, what would that mean for, for us and our family if we were in the same situation? Uh, next, I want to talk about something that's of great interest, and that is interest rates. Our chamber chat today, we're talking about your money and what's going on with your money and everybody's money and, and how that's going to relate to things that we're going to be doing in the future and have done all the way through the pandemic. Joining us to talk about that today, Jen Bogwald is a partner and business advisor in private enterprise at MNP, one of our chamber champions, by the way. And Robin Marshall is here. She's the director of wealth management for Island Savings Credit Union. Okay, rates, again, for perspective, today is January 19th. We're being told that we could probably anticipate a rise in interest rates in the next week to 10 days. Maybe that's already happened by the time people are watching this. What's that going to do, Robin? What's the increase in interest rates going to do with real estate, with investment? Yeah, for with sure. Uh, interest rates are, are uh, uh, definitely, uh, our interest rate rises are definitely on the, on the docket for this year. Uh, as you mentioned, there's there's one potentially slated for, for next week. And what the Bank of Canada has got their eye on as well is um, not to, not to be too aggressive with those uh, because 
uh, we're still in a recovery mode, then the last thing that they want to do is to send our uh, economy into a recession as, as we're still um, trying to get businesses back on their feet. And not only that, but the, the government as well has, has accrued a substantial amount of debt during this, uh, this time to help uh, shore up the economy. So um, mm-hmm. rising interest rates, you know, again, a good time to, to make sure that uh, you've, you've sat down with your advisor, maybe rebalanced your portfolio um, because of the, the great gains that uh, we saw through the markets last year. Do you have your uh, portfolio positioned uh, the right way? And Jen, with business, who many of them in some of the sectors we've already spoken about have become very close with their bank or credit union as they had to make their way through all of this. And just the day-to-day business, when interest rates start to jump, what's the impact of that going to be and what's your advice? Yeah. And it's a wide range of impact, obviously, depending on the type of business that you have. But I really encourage business owners to reflect on what kind of debt they have, uh, have a look at their not only their corporate debts, but their personal debts. Understand, are they variable? Are they fixed? Like, just get the basis of understanding of what you currently have. Something that always surprises me is how much uh, people will carry credit card debt. And, and you know, that isn't, I mean, right now, lending is so cheap. So, you know, hopefully a small rate won't have a huge, huge impact on the average business. However, um, yeah, it's another reminder. Go and look at your highest cost debt and just find ways to get rid of it. Find ways to to rejig your personal finances to mitigate the costs of these changes that are coming. Yeah, so take out a small loan or establish a line of credit to get rid of your credit card debt. Because that's, yeah, exactly. that's a large amount of interest. We are just about out of time. We've got about a minute left. Uh, anything in closing, Robin? What should we keep in mind as we take a look at our finances going through well, I guess it's going to be year three of the pandemic. Uh, I'd say the biggest advice again is is it really is time to make sure that you're in touch with your your advisor, that you've revisited your plan, that you feel uh, good about where things are are going. Uh, if you have some concerns, uh, you're worried about what you're hearing in the in in the news. That uh, we always say our our first job is is to help to talk you off the ledge. So uh, sometimes you just need that. Uh, objective third party just to confirm, hey, is, is everything okay and am I on track? And now would be the time to do that. Thank you. Jen Bogwald is a uh, partner and business advisor in private enterprise at MNP, a chamber champion. And Robin Marshall is the director of wealth management for Island Savings, a division of First West Credit Union and one of the big supporters of this chamber chat. Thank you both for being here today. Thank you for listening and watching. I'm Bruce Williams. We'll see you again for another chamber chat.